What up, though? You already know how it goes. Smash, like, subscribe, comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. Hey, right, let's get right, right into it. Uh, this is how you survive as a neutron, neutral or non-aggressive person on a short bit. You can apply it to a long bit, but it's more details with that. But this is how you survive. This is the basis around it. I'm going to get into detail about it. I'm going to try to make it long as possible for y'all because uh, that's what y'all keep leaving me in the comments. Make the videos longer. Make the videos longer. I've been trying to do that for y'all. I ain't no if and his buzz about that, but I'm going to feed y'all right here. I'm going to get into it. Three Gs. Gays, gangs, gambling. Now, let's break down these three Gs that you stay away from. You stay away from gays because even if you are gay, going to prison and getting into a, a relationship can be tricky. You don't really know who you get into a relationship with. So, if you cheat you're not faithful, you keep looking at other guys or, you know, what you would call a female in prison, that could be deadly and dangerous for you to get stabbed. Uh, your lover might not want you to go home. It might murder you. And I know that might sound extreme, right? But it's guys that don't murder correctional officers. It's guys that don't murder um, commissary women, people who work in different parts of the facility because they were about to retire and leave. I mean, they were used to them and they didn't want them to retire. I know that don't sound too logical, right? But it's just the truth, look it up. I share a story with y'all, just, just so y'all know. Y'all don't be on here talking about nothing I don't really be on. You know what I'm talking about? If I don't know it, I'll tell you, but this is the type of stuff to go on. And then somebody else might want your, your, your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and they're willing to take them by all means. And that means if, if, if putting a hit on your head is it, then that's what they're gonna do. So you stay away from the gay thing because it can get you in trouble. Not because it's wrong or nothing like that. I'm not on here seeing that or propagating no hate or nothing like that. I'm just seeing it can get you in a lot of trouble. And then two, when you present yourself as gay, you open yourself up to be put in that realm of the white guys, the young white guys that's not tough, that's coming in, the child molesters, the weak. Because they start trying to prey on you since you, oh, well, you're, gonna, you're gay anyway, you're going to give it to me. And that's, that'd be their logic. And they don't mind saying it in front of people. So that could open up a whole can of worms you don't want to deal with. I'm telling you, don't want to deal with it. I've seen it. Um, gambling. You can gamble, right? But you put yourself at risk. You can gamble. But it's not... It's not a wise idea, and especially to gamble depending on if your store come next week. If your money touch your account, you can put your store list in with no money on your account. But if your people send it the next day before the deadline, you'll get your store. But sometimes it don't always work out like that. So if you say I'm getting paid on store day and your store not there and people want their money, they're going to put all types of interest on it. Now, if you can't afford that interest or if somebody don't want to wait, then that could be a razor waiting to come across your face. That could be you uh, lying to somebody and people don't like being lied to, especially about their money. Commissary is money, food is money because the food in the cafeteria is horrible. So everybody take their food very, very serious. That's why you can get somebody stabbed for 20 noodles and a bag of chips and a honey bun. You could take that to a gang leader and he'll go send one of his flunkies to punch somebody in their mouth for you. Food is very, very important. So make sure you can cover your gambling debt. But and, and, and it's good to have the money on the wall to make it good, right? Because let's say you're gambling with somebody and you say, okay, we're going to pay up at the end of the day. Now you gave them opportunity to play you. And you don't give people opportunities to play. So that's why you say, every $5 we get to, every $5 is debt, we're going to pay up. So bring $5 worth of stuff up here. Keep it on you while we play. And when we get the $5, give it to me. Then go get another $5. Because at the end of the day, if I got you down $30 and I don't want to pay you and get paid, what you going to do? You're about to go home. You're on a short bid. See how you opened yourself up to something? Don't give nobody the opportunity to play you. Or make it look like you're a punk. Because once you look like a punk and people see that he didn't pay you, you gamble with somebody else, they're not going to pay you. You run a poker table 
and you responsible for responsible for making sure everybody get paid, everybody bringing stuff to the table and making your money, and they know you're a punk, they're just gonna say, all right, I just play $30 free. I'm not giving you nothing. Gangs, you stay away from gangs, especially if you're on a short bit. You know, you got gangs, bloods, vice lords, you know, um, GDs, so on and so forth. You might run across one of those leaders that don't care if you're about to go home. They'll say, well, you have a one to four bit. You're on your third year. So what you got a parole, you can do another year for the for, for the for the movement. Go punch him, go stab him, go do whatever. They'll flop you or take your parole from you, but this is what you signed up for. You signed up for gangbanging. And some people hardly. Some people will push you out the door, say, oh no, don't don't do nothing. Go home, go home, go home. You better out there. Some people don't care. They got natural life. So what's you doing another year? And they got to sit, sit in here the rest of their life or the next 25, 30 years of their life. You stay away from the gangs. If you're walking with your brother that's in your gang and somebody come punch him and then somebody else come kick him and you don't jump in, oh, no, I'm going home. You sit there and watch him get beat up. What you think about to happen to you? Eight times out of 10, Whoever you go to in that game and, and, and get them the reason, oh, I'm going home. So what? You should have jumped in, at least broke it up or pretend like you was about to, whatever. You should have did something. They're going to get you off that yard. And then you're going to end up jacking your parole off anyway unless you just sit there and get beat up or stabbed or whatever the case may be. But it, it's a horrible feeling to be two weeks away from the house, three weeks away from the house and jack off your parole. It'd be two or three weeks away from the house and now you're going home with a cut on your face. Now you're going home as a, a rat and bowl. And that's how gangs prey on other people too. Like when that, that type of stuff happens to somebody, they don't jump in and people go against them. Another set of come like, man, they should, they should want you to go home, brother. Man, they don't love you. They don't have no respect for you. They don't have no law, no order. You about to go home. Come over here with us. And now you're in another gang. Now you're in another situation like, that's if you're weak minded. Now you're in another situation like, Okay, um, he switched gangs on us. All right, he got to get beat out. He got to go to the hole behind this. Period. This is what's going to have to happen for him to get his walking papers from us. Sometimes you might have to abide by that. Ain't, ain't, did I tell you anything positive that, that, can't, that comes out of this? So if you do join something, try to join your religion because they're more based on principles and morals. But even some of them don't care about you, but it'll be more to care about you. So if you're about to go home and a brother asks you, a Moorish brother or a Nation of Islam brother asks you to carry a knife, you can go tell your grand sheik and your grand sheik, what? Or your sister grand sheik can tell you, hey, grand sheik, like, no, that ain't, that's not what it is. It happened to me. I'm about to go home. Well, I had the possibility to go home um, after I served my, I think it was like my second flop, maybe my third flop or something like that. A brother asked me to bring a knife to the yard. And I don't mind carrying small knives, right? This big, this big, little pokers about this big. He asked me to bring a knife this long in the yard. I'm talking about this knife was made out of a locker door. It was this long. Hey, man, you need to bring that knife to the yard, this knife to the yard. I don't want him over there no more. I'm like, what? I'll bring these, but I'm not going to bring the big one. And one of the uh, brothers, Sarkis Bay, heard about him. He went to the other brother like, man, you, do you know he about to go home? This is why you can't have this position, dog, because, you know, B.E. about to go home. Vince, you about to go home. What are you doing? And it was a big riff about that. He didn't care. And he was about to go home himself. But when you so institutionalized, you don't realize you're doing when you did a 15 year bit, then a 10 year bit, then a five year bit. You've been in prison more years than you've been alive. So all this seemed normal to you. All this seemed like a necessary risk. All this seemed like the Jackson days when you could walk the yard and, and there wasn't really no metal detectors and stuff like that. So, you know, the, the, the more end up getting all the knives and paying somebody to 
um, put them in another room and we never gave them back to where they were supposed to go. And, and, and the more too was looking for a situation just to take the knives and, and not give them to him because he was just, at the time, a little bit detrimental to the movement because he didn't have any remorse or he was just, he was so fierce. But I still got love for the brother. No, I understand who he is as a person. Can't be mad at him like, this, is, this has been your life. You know, so that's why I say stay away from gangs. Nothing really positive comes out of that besides somebody having your back. That's it. That's it. Okay. The next rule, steady yourself and mind your business. Can't be buddy-buddy with everybody. Steady yourself, mind your business. Simple as that. That's out here in the world, too. It's out here in the streets. When you mind your business, people have no reason to look at you and say, oh, he might know this. We got to get him gone. Or he might have knew this, and he might have told somebody else this. And they wasn't supposed to know. You see that all this, this, this reasoning, people just looking to get rid of you, looking to make an example out of you, looking to make a chess move. And when, when they make chess moves in prison, like y'all criticize my chess moves as being sneaky and treacherous, they do it even worse. But the thing is, when they do it, they want everybody to know about it, everybody. So other people can praise them for being a great warrior, a great leader, a great chess player. You dig what I'm talking about? A life a chess game of life type of player. You dig what I'm talking about? Um, find you a buddy for working out. Find you a buddy for working out. Find you a buddy for chess. Find you a buddy for um, walking around the track. You can have a couple different buddies, but make sure you know these buddies. Make sure you don't have a buddy that's going to get so attached to you that he don't want you to go home. Make sure you find the buddy that's not always in trouble with other people. Make sure you find you a buddy that's not going to be asking you to do crazy stuff to risk your freedom. You have to know who you're dealing with. Everybody is not meant to deal with or they're meant to deal with at just a certain point and that's it. You might trade and barter with them and that's it. Don't hang out with these certain people. Like, for example, what I learned is, if a guy came to prison, and I know I can't talk because I came with nine months left on the year and did four, but a little different. I was messed up because I took the rules too serious. I took them too serious. I took the rules like way beyond the point of no return. Because sometimes when somebody violates a rule, you can let them slide. I, and, and I had to learn that when somebody violated the rule at the beginning, Oh, it's a punishment. I'm the wrong person to feel justified for doing something bad to you because I'm going to run with it. As soon as I feel like in my head I got all the justification in the world, you broke the rule, you broke my moral code, you or you stepped on my morals, you disrespected me, you did all this stuff, I, I find all these reasons, you got to get punished. There's people like that that's way, 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 way worse than you. Right? Find out who you're dealing with. When a guy is in prison and he come down with a 1 to 20 and he on his 16th year, this guy been down 15 years and he's still in a level 4, never been to a level 2 or a level 1. And he's supposed to be there. It's not a guy you want to hang around with. It's guys like that that come down with a 1 to 20 and they only 16, 17 year and they ain't slowing down. They still, and don't care about maxing out. Say they do. Say they want to go home, but the actions never show. They had no social, it, you'll find people in there with no social skills at all. None. I'm talking about none. No excuse me. Pardon me. They have no social skills at all. And you get to hang around that guy. You and him going to get into it or he going to get you into some, to some stuff. But more than likely, you and him are going to get into it. Some guys are just super weird. Oh, man, you hang out with me every day. Why you can't loan me $30? Well, I only got $35 worth of stuff. So how can I loan you $30? All right, man, when you come out, we fighting. That's the type of people that's in there. You're not dealing with, you know, the greatest people from society, we dealing with all the defects. 
people that don't went crazy behind those bars. Learn who you're dealing with. You don't want nobody to feel like they can come around you every day. And then you realize, like, oh, shoot. I don't like this guy. But he keep coming around every day. And you just don't want to tell him. Bro, something wrong with you. Try to stay away from the basketball courts. Prison ball is real. It ain't like the movies where they be, you know, but a guy just lean into you. He'll 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 spin around on his pivot with his elbow way out. It's a guy, it's guys who, you know, you go up for a basket, they grab you and hold you tight and stuff like this. Just a bunch of weird stuff, especially if you're gambling or, you know, you're playing for some respect. You know, they get the best players together. He just gets stupid, dumb series over nothing. You know, like you play, you, you'll be playing a seven, a three on three. And every time you post a guy up and you try to go off for, a, you know, a layup or a hook, he'll grab you. And, that, and that'll get frustrating. Like, man, we playing basketball. You going to stop following me or whatever? You going to stop pushing me out the air? And he'll feel right for what he's doing. Like, like, what? Bro, you push me out the air. I almost hit the pole. That turned into fights so, so much. Especially, uh, I see the one-on-ones where two guys get together, the good, the ones that's real good, they get together, and they'll bet and gamble on it, and then other people have side bets. And, and one guy just getting torched. He good, but he getting torched. I bet you don't want to fight. I ain't giving you nothing. Stay, just stay away from the basketball, man. Just try to stay away from the basketball, the flag football. The, what you can go play, go with the Mexicans and, and, the, and, and some of the white guys and play soccer. They don't never fight over soccer. They get intense. It's competitive, but they don't never fight over it. Go play handball with the white guys. Go over there with the Aaron Brothers. They'll play, they'll play with you. Especially if you good. AB, the AB, the Oldness, the Thors, the Von Hollers, they'll play with you. Ain't no if ends, buts, but they'll play with you. And they'll never be fighting over it. I never seen, I seen so many handball matches and they never fight. The most I ever seen was they, they get each other fake. I'm better than you. No, no, you weak. I'm better than you. That's what they do. Go play handball. Go play hockey. People who play hockey. Never get into fights. Whether it's roller hockey, street hockey, just with your shoes on. And it's, it's some black guys that play every sport. And, and every sport. And so they'll stay away from basketball and stuff like that. They'll play every other sport. Because it's fun. It's competitive. It's something different. And a lot of people just looking for the thrill and the com camaraderie of being out there with brothers battling. Stay away from basketball. That's one thing. You stay away from basketball. Flag football, because a guy get to tackling and, and, and forget that he playing flag football. Seen a fight happen from that. Dude go up for a catch. He come and spear him out the air. Dude, brother man, why, why, why the guy that got tackled on the ground, holding his stomach and his back. His brother man come throw football at the guy who tack tackled the face, and next thing you know, it's just a big old fight. Football and basketball, stay away from it, man. Okay, please um, show respect, not fear. Show respect, not fear. Simple as that. Don't be scared. If somebody ever confront you or ask you about something, don't get to shaking. Don't let your voice get, you know, light, raspy. Because people gauging your whole body. People gauging. And when they see you scared, they know they can press up on you. They know they can check you in front of people and look like they tough. So you show respect, not fear. Because everybody there, they deserve respect. You got to give it to them. Even if they don't, you still give it to them. As long as they don't disrespect you, still give it to them. You playing a respect game at the highest level. It's not like in the world. This respect game can lose, have you lose an eye. This respect game can have you get slashed. This respect game can have you die over something very, very, very small in the streets. If you owe somebody a noodle or two, they're not going to kill you. They're not going to stand. They're not going to want to fight over a noodle. They're fighting over noodles because you're deprived of everything. It's all you got. It's worth something. 
don't steal or extort. No matter how lucrative it could be, no matter how easy it could be, it's tempting to not do it. I didn't have to do it. I had plenty of outside support. Plenty. But I was stupid. I was dumb. I was young. I'm like, all I got to do is scare him. And every store I can get $25 from or $50 extra from. Honey. Because once you start extorting people, first off, everybody you approach not going to give it to you. Especially if you don't know how to weed them out and look and see their ways and tendencies to see if you are, you know, you're just a rookie at this. A guy might take off and punch you right then and there. You tell him he going to owe you something. Usually you will tell by how the conversation go whether you're going to get something from him or not. But I couldn't resist because I had those predatory skills already. They just wasn't home yet. Coming from the streets. I already had the skills of just pushing up on somebody, but there they got honed and I just had the ability to approach certain people and talk to them. Tell them the risk versus reward of giving it to me or not giving it to me. I did it. But also that that that, that brought other other drama. Other people seen the money I was getting and they tried to press up on them and say, hey, you know what? Instead of $50 a store, just give me 20. And I go talk to uh, Bill and I go talk to Bart Hill and he'll, 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 he'll let you go. We'll work it out. I'll give him files out of it. You'll be more protected. And that that turns in a, bro, you know I'm, I'm getting money from dog. Why would you try to step on my toes? And we got to go in the bathroom, bro. Or no, it ain't going to happen. And I'm, I'm talking to him crazy. Oh, it ain't going to happen. And he get mad. Oh, we got to go in the bathroom. All right, bet. Let's go. Don't do it no matter how lucrative and easy that it looks. Stay, just stay away from extortion and don't get extorted because that's going to make your bid a lot harder. Because if they figure they can take your, your mama money she's sending you, your girlfriend money, they, they they feel like they can take this, this. You might run across a guy like Pussycat that's going to tell you he want more or you keep your commissary, you want something else. Stay away from it. Don't get extorted. Say no. Stand up for yourself. Um, and don't steal, of course. I don't care how easy it look or who it's from. He might be soft, but he might go to somebody and say, hey, look, I got 50 bones. He stole something from me. Go get it back from me and beat him up. And and now you was just a predator. You was just a thief. Now you now you pray. So that could be that could go very, very, very dangerous for you. Um, don't borrow or loan. If you borrow, make sure you are able to pay it back without a doubt. Or you borrow something from somebody and they don't want interest on it. Or they're not your homeboy and they're just not going to, you know, just accept the item back. They want more on it. Don't accept, don't, don't borrow from random people that you don't know. Because a guy feel like, all right, well, I'll let you borrow this, 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 and that. And I didn't charge you no interest. What you going to give me? Or they're going to always come to you for something. But they're not going to come every now and then. They're going to come every other day. Can I get a noodle? Can I get a noodle? Can I get a And the moment you don't give it to them, oh, man, I, I loaned you $10. And that turned into a situation. All these dumb little rules, man, in the world, it wouldn't even matter. And there it does. That's why you stay out of prison. Don't borrow from nobody. Don't loan to nobody. And if you do, make sure it's just a little something small. Because if they don't pay you back, other people gonna see they don't pay you back. They're gonna see you as weak. Because you loaned something and a guy clearly didn't give it back to you. And you go ask, hey man, you got that? No, I ain't got it. My money didn't come. Next door, no, I ain't got it. This happened. Now you look weak. Certain people could take loss. You could take losses. When you when you run a conversation, when you run a store, you can you can take losses. But you're a neutron. You're short bit, you're not that aggressive already. I'm teaching you to stay away from all the signs that make you look weak. So don't borrow, don't loan, because it gives you a chance. It gives you it, it it gives the opportunity for you to look weak. 
like you pray. Stay away from that. Um, don't be buddy buddy with the police. Don't be all in their face. Leave that to the old school inmates. The ones that's been down 25, 30 years, because that's how they kick it sometimes. You all buddy buddy with the police, you're going to end up like Polo. Shout out Polo from Saginaw. He all buddy buddy with the police. He made, even if he wasn't snitching, he made it seem as though he was because the police giving you all these extra privileges, letting you come out your room all times that you're not supposed to be out, let you stay in the day room while nobody else in there. You're supposed to be cleaning up, but they let you stay in the day room and get the lines for the tickets and because you're so cool with them. They put like a $60 hit on his head with food. One of the brothers, excuse me, they put a $60 hit on his head for the food with food and they came up with $4 to send him in his commissary or vice versa. Maybe it was whatever, right? Brother man, Sam Zeal, stabbed that boy so many times. Santa's here doing a long time. He already angry. He already wanted to blow the joint. He already wanted to go somewhere else. Didn't want to be there no more. So he took it and said, hey, I'll do it. He wanted to do it anyway. So everybody felt like he was, he was snitching. You see, you, you see how they go? Stay away from the police. Don't be talking to them. You can say, hi, hey, what's up, man? Hey, you see the Lions game? But that's it. Go ahead. Go. After that, go. Don't sit in their face all day. Cause when people think you're snitching, they're looking for any reason to X you out at any moment. Um, know the rules of the facility. When I say know the rules of the facility, I'm talking about amongst the inmates. If the inmates say that when you go in the day room, the first table belong to the Moors, the second table belong to the Bloods, third table vice lords, fourth table on the back, gays, fifth table on the right, GDs, uh, the other table by the microwave, the sixth table. That's for anybody cooking, anybody to get the table. It's for whatever, whoever want to sit there. That's how I go. If you go to the lunch room and they say when you go to the left and you sit on the left, the, the first table belongs to the Bloods, the Cobras. Know it. Know what phone that you supposed to use because the phone belongs to certain organizations, certain nations. Even if it's empty, they might not want you on it. So if it's empty and you know that that's the Muslim phone, or if it's empty and you know that's the Blood's phone, go to the Blood's, hey, Blood, hey, can I use the phone? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Simple as that, simple respect. It's the rules. Even though the phone's supposed to be for everybody, the facility don't say, hey, this, this phone is for this particular group or these particular people or this particular belief system. The inmates make those rules. So don't be all tough like, oh man, I'll use any phone I want to. Don't work like that. Um, don't sit up and lie. Don't be one of those lie people that always lie. You try to stay low key. Don't sit up and lie about, oh, I got a Bentley out there. I got this and that out there. Don't sit up and lie. People are already looking for a reason not to like you. Don't sit up and tell lies because once people see that you're a liar, they don't mind saying, hey, yeah, I'm cool with him, but he always lying. I don't really like him. Go on here. Get... Looking for a reason to tarnish your name. Looking for a reason to get rid of you. Sometimes there's nothing else to do to these people. There's nothing else to do but cause chaos and drama. So don't sit up and be a liar at all, okay? Um... Make sure your body clean, especially if you're in a cell with other people or a cubicle with other people. Stay clean, because people check you and they check you harshly and that can start a fight. That might hurt your little feelings. You might, man, mind your bit. And then next thing you know, you want to fight or a guy cussing you out in front of everybody. And then once you get to cussing you out and yelling and stuff like that, you ain't really tough. People going to laugh at you. And then they're going to think you're a coward. Remember I said this is the rules for the, for the neutral people on short bits. Trying to go home by all means. That's not really tough. And they don't want to sit up and get in combat. Or have to prove themselves in the facility and then lay back. They just want to go home and risk nothing. Those are, these are the rules I'm telling you. So keep your body clean. Because people really, really check you about that. 
Don't gossip at all. Don't say what you heard, especially if it's got to do with gang business. Don't say Vice Lord said this, Blood did this. Don't keep your mouth closed about the Moors, about the nation, about the Melanchthon. Keep your mouth closed. I heard this in the hallway. I heard, I heard he stared at this guy at the last joint hall. I heard he a snitch. I heard he did. Shut your mouth. Mind your business. Now go back to minding your business. If somebody tell you something, don't go repeat it to somebody else because it's people like me that come tell you something. And I know it's not true. And But before I come tell you, I'll go tell somebody like S&B Spade. Hey, bro, I'm about to go tell somebody something about you. I ain't going to say who it is, but I'm going to tell them some foul stuff about you. I just want to see if they come back and tell you. Oh, all right, blood. And I'll go tell you some foul stuff about him. And then if he able to repeat that to me, I know that's you that's been telling that whole time. Or it might have not been you telling that whole time. Or overheard something or started this situation. But you just decided to interject yourself in it and go tell somebody else. Now I'm going to think it was you the whole time. Or my brother, man, don't think it's you the whole time. See, I set you up. Went back and told only me and you know this. I just told you some fabricated, exaggerated stuff. You know, it's a, it's a game of chess. Treacherous. Um, if you walk away from a situation, walk away. And don't be too proud to walk away. But don't walk away like a cow. Walk away, but don't walk away like a cow. Stand your ground. Don't be nervous. Don't hurry up and try to run. If it's a situation, it's a confrontation, you sit, keep your body posture good, you look them dead in the eyes, all right, I'm going home. I'm going home, bro. I don't want no problems. That's it. I'm going home, bro. Ain't nobody going to touch me or beat me up or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? As long as nobody don't put their hands on me, I'm good. I'm, I'm trying to go home. You get what I'm talking? Go on about your business. And usually you don't really even want to tell people that you're about to go home because they feel like, oh, he ain't going to do nothing. I'm not going to do something to him. That's how I go. But certain situations, you got to, hey, bro, I'm straight, man. I'm trying to get down. It's best to say I'm straight. I'm trying to get down to a lower level. Or you already at a low level. Like, man, I'm straight on all that drama, bro. I'm good. I ain't about to do all this. I ain't trying to go back to the box, man. You know, you might have not never, you, you might have never been to the hall of the box. If they call the hall of the box. You, just say it. I right, man, I ain't trying to go back to the box. I just got out. Whatever you got to say to walk away, but not walk away looking like a coward. If you get what I'm saying. Some people get what I'm saying. Some people might be like, oh, man, what are you talking about? Simple math, simple rules. Um. Uh, don't hold anything for anyone. So if somebody come to you and be like, oh man, you know, the police, uh, police like you, police not gonna be searching your room. They already did, they searched your room once uh, about a week ago. You got another three weeks before they search it again. Hold his drink, alcohol. Like, hold these knives for me. I'm gonna put them right here, here and there. They'll never find them. They ain't gonna be looking for a knife in your room. Then, you know, I'm an old timer. They gonna look for knives in my room. Tell that boy, no. Nah, I'm straight, bro. Nah, I'm straight, but I, I got somebody you can pay to do it. Whatever you got to say. No. Oh, man, come on, dog. Just just, just for an hour or two. That hour turned into four. Oh, man, I can't get back down there and get it up out of there, man. Keep it for the night. They'll play you like that. Then the night turned into a week. The week turned into two weeks. And really, behind, and really, it might not even be theirs. They might be getting paid to hold it for somebody else, but they gave it to you. So they wouldn't take the risk and they can keep holding much stuff that people bring down to them. And they got you holding. Now you the coward, now you the mule. The mule. Don't do that. Um, I told y'all, don't be buddy-buddy with everybody. Period. You know who you with. And then you don't want to seem like you playing both sides, so you can't be with the bloods all day. Then the next day you with the GDs, especially when it's tension on the floor. It's cool to, to mingle with other people and stuff like that, but you in and out of everybody's car, you're gonna be guilty by association sometimes. So if you hang with bloods half the week, GDs the other half of the week, so when they pop off and somebody get mad and they want some blood and revenge, well, hey, that's his homeboy. They might think you're a GD, they might think you're a blood, or they might think you're affiliated or ally. So you can't be buddy-buddy with everybody. You gotta keep your circle small, too many snakes. Then you don't want to ever get caught up in that, oh, he told me this about you, or he told me that about you. Can't be buddy-buddy with everybody, man. Uh, don't complain about short time. If 
You only got two years, three years, four years. Don't sit up there, man, I hate waking up in prison every day, dog. Man, well, how much time you got left? Man, I got about a year and a half. God tell you, man, shut the fuck up. I've been here 30 years and I got 25 to go. What you talking about? Don't call that. Guys that get so, so, so mad about that. That's why I never woke up and been like, man, I'm tired of prison, man. In my head, I'm like that. I'm never bragging about I'm about to go home. Don't brag about, about being about to go home all the time. Only when people ask you, hey, how much time you got left? Shoot, I'm about to max out in a year. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, it's good you never complain, young blood. I've been down for 42 years. And I'm healthy. I'm, I think I'm going to live to 90. And I got to stay here until I die, come back, and do my next natural life sentence. Don't sit up and talk about your time and don't complain about your time. Boys are getting mad. Talking about extremely mad. You talking about a year. You talking about a year and they got 50 left and they been down 20. I'll be mad too. I ain't gonna lie. Um, told you don't join the game. Uh, don't hold up the phones. Especially at the last time that you can come out. It's like for an hour, 45 minutes. Get on the phone. Hi, I love you. Can you send this money here, here, and there? Hang up. Don't use the whole 15-minute phone call. And if you do use one 15-minute phone call, don't turn around and make another call. Guys will be so pissed and mad. If somebody says on the, on the wing before we lock down, they say, hey, when we open back up for that hour, I got first on the phone. I got second. I got third. When the lights come on and you come back out for that last hour, don't go rush to them phones and cut them guys off. I don't see that term, man, so many times. Do not do it. Um, do all trades up front. Like I said, don't give somebody something and expect them to bring it back because you can get played like that. You're putting yourself in a position to look like a cop. So do all your trades up front. I say trades, not, not brawling and lending. Trades up front. Check every item before you take it to your room because he can give you an empty deodorant. And then you come back and say, hey, man, I just, just empty. Or one empty when I gave it to you. Can you go to his brother or his head? Hey, man, he got me empty deodorant. The guy like, well, you took it to your room. You should have checked it first. If he, you know, if he not a um, horrible leader. I mean, if he a horrible leader, but if he not, a, a guy be like, well, my brother, man, he is kind of scandalous. I'm going to ask him. But they ain't going to really take your word over his. But they'll tell you, like, well, if you believe that he really did that to you, then, you know, whatever, do whatever you're going to do. Just don't stab him. Because he deserved what he got coming to him. You know what I'm saying? That's how civilized people act in, in prison. I'm talking about in prison. The civilized, the standard for civilized in prison is different from out here. All right. I'm not saying like, I'm not saying it like that. You dig? Um, don't be smiling and happy all the time. I know that sounds crazy. The, the more you smile, the more people gonna think you gay and like being in prison. The more you smile, people gonna like, man, this guy always be smiling. I think this a game, goofy, cause it's just it's all it's almost always serious, man. So it's a serious a lot. It's a time and place to smile and laugh with your homeboys, but you just walking around smiling, giggling. I said, remember, I said these are the rules. If you're neutral and you're not that aggressive, you don't want to sit around thinking people thinking you happy and jolly, and they gonna want to ruin that. I, I, I don't make the rules, bro. I don't make the rules. I don't make the environment. I don't make the mindset and the mentality. I go there and I fit in to an extent. Um, make a schedule and stick to it. Stick to this schedule so much to the, it's to the point where if you don't do these things, positive things, stand out of trouble type of things, do it so much to the point that it feels like it's not normal if you don't do it. Get as many classes as you can. Don't deal with people 
as much as you can, getting all the classes, because when you go to parole board, you can say, I took this, I took that, I took that, I volunteered for this. I got the certificates, even though, you know, some of those classes don't count to the parole board, like DPP and the other class, the sex offender classes, all those classes, you know, they, they see, but you can bring it to the parole board, hold up, hey, I got a certificate for this, a certificate for that. It was signed by this person, it was signed by that person. You can verify it if you want to, but I'm just saying this is what I've been doing to occupy my time becoming a better person. Um, and the last rule I got for you is body language. If you got a switch in your walk, take it up out of your walk. Cause I, some, some people walk just feminine and they not gay. Take that switch up out your walk, body language. When you talk to somebody, don't be looking at the ground cause they don't think you soft, think you a coward, think you unmanly. I don't make the rule, this is just a barbarian society. This is the Viking society. This is about the sword society. Body language. Look people in their eyes. Don't be looking away. You know, especially if they're asking you a question. They're going to think you're lying if you can't look them in their eyes most of the time. When somebody check you, don't get all timid, body crazy, shake. Body language is key. Chest up, chest out, head up, ten toes down. Don't be shaking hands all soft. If you Islamic people, don't be Islam up front, eye level. It's all it's all about presentation in prison. It's all about fear. It's all about respect. But fear, is top respect, then love, and then so on and so forth. But fear is the top thing. Masculinity is top. It's, it's, you can't be feminine in prison, especially on a short bit. Because you don't want to become a victim. So I gave you all the rules that you should apply if you ever go or you're about to go. Or just so you know, you can use these rules in the world too. In the streets, you can use them. I gave you all the rules to if you're a neutron and a non-aggressive type of person in prison. This is how you can finagle two, three years Get that parole, be out the door, and on your way out the door, then you say, F everybody, don't ever come back. Don't ever come back. Just go home. Stay home. Please, y'all, go check out the story, y'all, Ricky Rimmer Bay. Please uh, click the links below. Please click them. Go look at the Voice of Detroit article and leave a comment on there for them for spirits. Comment all the way at the bottom. Um, it was wrote by Diane. Borkowski. I can't pronounce her name. I, I keep forgetting how to pronounce it. But very good story, man. Very, very good story. I think I'm going to do the little Larry next because all y'all y'all been asking for it. I'm going to give you just the details that I know, the court records, the conversation, so on and so forth. The little Larry thing, it need to be told because he he, he is a de infamous Detroit legend. I said infamous. Notorious. And he got some crazy, crazy, crazy stories, man. Little Larry. Um... Everybody been asking that damn near morning. Rimmer Bay. It just it been Rimmer Bay a little Larry, but look, look, Rimmer Bay, I had to get out there because uh, you know, we on broad time with the brother. Not broad time as far as his life, but broad time because, you know, situations may change with him. Hopefully it does. But anyway, links all down there. Please, please follow me on Instagram, uh, Twitter, whatever. If you follow me, I'm gonna at you back. I'm gonna subscribe to you. Uh I appreciate all y'all for y'all support. Thank you, man. Shout out Vince X Sola. Shout out Ryan Rose, shout out Pretty Face, shout out Abby Original, shout out uh, 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 Marshall. I appreciate all y'all. And then I appreciate everybody sending those cash apps too, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Stick with me. I got you. I'm going to drop some more heat for y'all. I'm going to do it slowly because I got some heat, heat. But I'm going to do that when I get the monetization back. I know that I'm going to do numbers. But I'm going to continue with growing. I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all took me from like three bands. Not three little bit, but 3,000 subscribers up to, I'm almost at 10. In a matter of weeks, in a matter of like two, y'all did y'all thing, man. I appreciate y'all. Y'all leave me on them comments. Oh, hey, this 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 for bro to say, hey, man, you should at least do a 45-minute video. I told him, like, I, I, I might only be able to do 30 minutes, bro, but we at 44 right now. We at 44 right now. 
So this this something to feed the streets, man. This something to feed the truck drivers, the people on the way to work drinking a coffee. Anybody drink that coffee in the morning, what y'all need to do is go get y'all some cappuccino. Whoa. Get your Snickers, some hot cocoa, little creamer with the coffee. Little creamer. Mix that thing up. If you want to, you could drop a uh one of them cinnamon candies in there. If you want to, that's if you get freaky. But if not, just drop that little piece of Snickers in that joint. Let it melt. Drink that thing, man. You're going to be wired. And it's going to taste so good. You're going to be drinking coffee all day. Go do it. It's called a mocha shot. Prison mocha shot. Peace and blessings be to y'all, dog.